There you go. I don't know. You must have come in your milk, honey. Apparently all the feed is down there. <laughs> See, I suck at trying out new things. It usually ends in a disaster. So this is the before. you guys it is gorgeous out I put on my coat but I think I can take it off today we're in complete lockdown we're back to where we were literally a year ago when we didn't even know what we were dealing with feeling very lucky and blessed we have this every day drive like your mother wild and crazy, wild and crazy. Ooh. Hi. hi how's it going See if I can get this started. You know how many times I haven't been able to get this thing going? No one's watching. No, not at all. I didn't do anything. I didn't touch it. It's at my spot. Stupid dogs. Move. Move. They will. I hate 28 because it's like thinner Sticky. than water, so it, like you can't wash it off. It gets through every little crevice. Look at all the chemistry you're learning. Oh. You, even... you could have took science after all. No, I could have. <laughs> That's the head right there. That's where it is? Yeah. How many weeks? Oh, it's, I'm more looking at growth hormone staging. Oh. It's G31. G31. <laughs> oh, I got it first try. <laughs> Looks good. Yep. Can't complain. This uh, strip in here when I'm driving down the road is so green compared to. Is that a different variety again? Yeah, this is a uh, pioneer stuff. You're gonna grow maybe more of that? I guess it depends how it does. Color doesn't mean yield. Color doesn't mean yield. So, what are you doing today? It feels like we're doing what we did a week ago, two weeks ago. But the only thing we can do right now, which is just doing the second shot of nitrogen on the winter wheat, which uh, is now at a stage where it should, the extra nitrogen should make it growthy because now it's kind of gone from vegetative going more to a reproductive. So the little wheat head is starting to move up the stem or the stem's growing and the wheat head's going up with it. So it's called, as I said before, grow stage 30 which is called pseudo stem elongation, but it's basically starting to grow up and not out. So when it's doing that, we can put more nitrogen on without worry of getting too much vegetative growth. So 
That's so what we're doing. you could have put all this on a couple weeks ago when you did it before, but you did it in two shots. Why is that? Because uh, the weather we had uh, back like uh, 10 days ago was so nice. I was afraid that it would be a little bit deficient in end, so we gave it half the amount because we didn't want it to get too much because if it got too much it would have gone super vegetative and this got really big and put too much energy in growing vegetative stuff instead of making a weed head so uh. Uh, we just wanted to feed it enough to kind of get it through and then now that it's kind of at the big growth stage uh, I don't have any problems putting that on it because it's going to hopefully put it to yield and not to growth. There you go. Alright. We'll see honestly. I don't know. So I was able to fill it fuller. I just don't think, I just feel like it's not on that rim right. But we're gonna see if this will work. You're ridiculous. I wanted to update you on my little uh, prison break babies, my my smallest prison break babies. They are doing really well. I made their pen a bit bigger. I am gonna just keep these guys separated for a little longer. I want mom to get really into her milk production. We've been supplementing these lambs. It's questionable whether they had enough colostrum when they needed it which is those first five hours uh when carissa came in here the morning they were born um the morning after they were born they were already dry so mom hadn't come into her milk that i could tell as of then uh so we topped them up all day for 24 hours with colostrum but i'm always concerned that that's it's a little too little too late kind of thing and i noticed they had the scoots on um probably about three days ago two days ago now and uh, so I gave him a tiny itty bitty little bit of tetracycline just to kick that. Uh, and so far it seems to be okay. I honestly didn't think that they would make it. Once I see that runny poo at that age, it's not usually a good sign, but they're still good. You must have come in your milk, honey. And I did, sh I uh, trimmed her feet yesterday because she was actually, sorry about my greasy hands. She was actually in with the group that I hoof trimmed the other day. So I came in here yesterday and just um, trimmed her feet, which is not fun when they're like this. I'd rather them in the hoof trimmer, but we did it. So hopefully, she looks, she's, she's looking better every single day. Uh, she's got a ton of feed here, all for her and water. And the lambs are doing good. You guys saw me do this uh, the other day, so I won't bore you too much with this. Uh, but I wanted to do a little more of a close-up to see actually what I'm doing, just if you've never uh, seen these work before, the Infacto trimmers, uh, and just how I trim hooves. Uh, these need to be done quite often, actually, because my animals are on a pack. Some of them are pretty good. Uh, the only really bad ones are the ones that have missed a breeding. Like, they just got off schedule, and I, I still fight with that. I don't know how to separate them out and treat them differently it's just one of those things that's why i really it always it really all boils down to having good conceptions because it really screws up my cycles on everything on all my logistics when they miss so uh i do take i do take blame for that so this shimmer you really got to try to get the u as tight as possible um, just so she doesn't move and injure herself or me. Okay. 
these ones aren't too too bad but I'll let you see up close what I'm doing they kind of grow they grow this way of course like our fingernails but they instead of growing like up and over they grow around so then and then the manure gets stuck in underneath this little flap so I take I trim off the the ends and then that frees up all that and I can scrape out that manure and then take off these sides so everything is flush and then the U walks a lot nicer on her feet and legs. So yeah, this isn't this isn't even she hasn't even been that long since I've last trimmed her. They just grow really fast. It doesn't bother them. I just get concerned that it starts to alter the way they walk. Some hooves are softer than others. These ones aren't too bad. This takes me a little longer when I'm trying to talk to you guys. When I'm in the zone, I can get one done pretty quick. Those two are done. So uh, as I've been doing these U's, I've been just kind of making the pen in sections. So I'm just opening the last gate here, letting them all be back together the way they were before. <laughs> Apparently all the feed is down there. <laughs> Good morning, it's Monday. Carissa is feeding for me because I guess her classes don't start till Wednesday. It's her second semester. Um, but they're under COVID, so she's online. So I thought while I had her, I wanted to set something up that I got last week delivered. It's something that I'm going to be testing over the next few weeks. So check this out. So this is called the Easy Clam made by Lakeland out in Manitoba. So the U goes in here and it, sque it squeezes them to do any of my management jobs. But I believe it's on an incline, so I think all this has to be set up with it. So I'm gonna wait till Chris is done chores. I hear her feeding right now. And then uh, me and her, I'm gonna tear down my Marweld one for a little bit, uh, see what I can use and what I can't use and then see I'm hoping this stuff attaches to my um, my existing handling system but we're gonna see and then I'm probably gonna have to be in contact with them just to make sure I got it set up right before I actually use it and if anyone knows me if you've been watching my channel long enough you know that uh, I suck at trying out new things it usually ends in a disaster so uh, there's no promises that, that, that this is going to stay, but I promised them I was going to try it out. They've been, we've been in contact for like over a year and I just could never, I never just had the time to, to try it. So we're going to try it today. Well, we're not going to try it today. We're going to set it up today. We're going to start setting it up today. Okay, so this is the before.
the white cans maybe two years ago. They have the nose, but. Maybe they did. Because I actually like it. I like taking it along with it. All right, let's bring in this new stuff. Now we have to figure out how to set it up. And the only thing I have is their catalog. And I could probably YouTube it as well. But basically this is, that's the setup. So it's a ramp, uh, I'm assuming this is probably the in. And this is the out, because I think this is a sort gate. I think, or maybe that's the in and maybe that's the out. I don't know, we're gonna figure it out. Once this, uh, because it's going to be on an oh, angle, okay. then those will be perfectly straight, is my theory. Like, it's freaking oh, heavy! This is the lip that that thing has to set in on the end of that uh, ramp. It has to sit in here. So we kind of got to hold those up a bit. I wonder if we can just flip this in here. Ah, there we go. What about you though? Afternoon. This looks really nice. Uh, there, are, the, I, I haven't tested it yet, so I have no idea if it's going to work. It fits really nice. Now, I would never want to take it in and out all the time, so I am a little concerned. There's a couple jobs I'm really leery on. I did put my Vino sort gate on the end, but you are able to do the sorting here with this handle. So that goes that way. Goes that way. Uh, I'm just a little concerned that they have to jump off. And then this is the actual squeeze chute. So this is an add-on for you lambs just to make the space a little smaller. But here is the foot pedal. So the foot pedal, if I step on this, so I'm gonna step on this, and this closes. So there. So that would squeeze a sheet. And then when I press this guy and put my hand on this, it pushes it right back as far as I want. There's some tread here, tread here. So this is a ramp 
with tread, which is really nice. So hopefully it doesn't get too slippery. Uh, and then if, so say I have Rebecca, this is kind of the things I like. So say if I have Rebecca, she can kind of open up here and do the ultrasound and the sheep is nice and squeezed. So I'm thinking she will like this a little better. Um, I put the guillotine gate in there just in case, like if it is a Rebecca day, I'm just wondering if this would hurt her arm if there's sheep trying to push through. So I just thought that was really nice. Um, hmm. So I, uh, yeah, so I added this, whether we need it or not, it's here. I can lift it up and get it out of there. I did still add on our uh, gates, just in case I did want to do some stuff in the in the corral. I have this put down. So yeah, so this is the beast. The one good thing about it is it does go straight through. So there's no real gate to make the you want to stop, which I'm hoping will help her go up the ramp. But I just know my sheep, and I know they're not like other sheep. I know that they just don't like to move. I'm not gonna say it's not gonna work and I'm not gonna try to manifest negativity, which is what I do. But I am afraid that if they don't wanna go and they stop here, like say this is open, and they stop here and not wanna go up that ramp, I can't be there to stop it and to squeeze it and get a you to keep going if she decides to stop. So all of a sudden my solo work may turn into needing someone else to help me, which for the most part, I have Carissa and I can plan my day to have her, but I do, sometimes I am spontaneous and I like to do jobs on my own. And I'm not entirely sure I can be two places at once. So I'm a little bit scared of that. It might be one of those things is maybe if I'm running them through enough, they're gonna get used to it. That's what I'm hoping. But uh, I am a little bit nervous of that. The other job I'm really nervous of this not working the greatest is weaning day. So over the next few weeks, you'll be able to see me use this thing uh, and see if I like it. Next week, we're going to be vaccinating all those ewes that I just uh, trimmed their hooves. So I'll run them through and we will vaccinate. I, w I think I'm going to love this for vaccinating. Um, just for to keep each you still and be able to really get a good sub Q vaccine because that stuff is supposed to be sub Q. And if this shoot works real nice, maybe I can use this to trim my ram's hooves and somehow like just get in here and lift their feet kind of back and put them on my maybe put them on my lap if they're if they're contained real nice. But yeah, uh, very thankful I get to try this out. Um, and I'm sure I'm going to like it. So I'm sure it's going to be a part of the farm, which makes me happy. I don't want to move it again because it was a bit tricky to put together. I would say if you don't have strong people, uh, just make sure you have a forklift or a loader help you lift this stuff. But yeah.